This lesson, we're going to look at exponential growth and exponential decay. Growth means it's going to get bigger in the future. Decay means it's going to get smaller in the future. So exponential growth gets bigger and grows over time, while exponential decay gets smaller over time. Homes typically get larger in, or increase in value over time, so that's an exponential growth. Other things depreciate, meaning getting less expensive over time, and that would be cars. Now, when you're looking at exponential decay, you're either going to use y equals a times 1 minus r, all raised to the t, or you're going to use y equals a times e, all raised to the negative kt. y is the amount left. a is your initial amount. R here is your interest rate as a, or not necessarily interest rate, but your percentage of change as a decimal. So if you had a percentage of change of 10%, you'd want to rewrite it as 0.1. And then T is your time. Down below here, T is still your time. E is the natural number E. And K is a constant, which varies from problem to problem. However, if you're dealing with carbon-14, your K is going to be this value here. So just remember, if it's carbon-14, you're going to be dealing with this. Now, if it's exponential growth, it's going to be similar. Notice how this equation here on the right is similar to what's on the left. It's exponential decay, so we're subtracting R. Here, this is exponential growth, so we're adding R. Notice how if it's a scientific situation, we're using these bottom ones. And this exponential growth is similar to this exponential decay. Except the decay, you had a negative k, or we're subtracting k. Over here, you have a positive k in your exponent. But the y, the a, the r, the t, and the k all still represent the same idea. So we're going to start off with this. We have a cup of coffee, and coffee has caffeine, and some people really like caffeine. And if you get on caffeine, sometimes you can get hyper. Other people just kind of get up to normal when they get on caffeine. But after a while, your body slowly gets rid of that caffeine. And in this situation, 11% of the caffeine leaves your body. We want to know how long it's going to take for 90% of the caffeine to be eliminated. Now, to me, I'm looking at this, and I'm not thinking it's a scientific situation. We're not dealing with chemicals and things like that. So I'm thinking of using the non-scientific one, which is this. And we also have a your rate as a percent. The scientific one does not have your rate as a percent. We also need to look at A being your initial amount. Well, our initial amount was 130 grams of caffeine. Y is the amount that we would have left. Well, we have 90% of the caffeine being gone. So first of all, we need to figure out 90% gone. That means 10% is left because y represents your amount left. So 10% of that 130 means there's 13 grams left. So we're going to go our 13 grams equals our initial amount, 1 minus, and then r, once again, is your rate as a decimal. So we're going to move our decimal point over two spots. And we're wondering how long. How long is your time? So that's what t is. We can simplify this a little bit with what's inside of the parentheses. Now, some of you might be tempted, might be tempted to take the 130 times what's in the parentheses. But we cannot multiply the 130 by what's in the parentheses, because the parentheses has an exponent on it. The 130 does not. Remember, if you were working this out normally, you'd have to do the exponent before you could do the multiplication. So we got to get rid of that 130, so we divide both sides by the 130, and that's where the point 0.1 comes from. 
So we have point 0.1 equals this. Now that we have the part with the exponent by itself, now we can use logarithms. I chose to use a common log. There's no base written, so that's assumed to be a common log. So I applied a common log to both sides. You could apply a natural log to both sides. It's not going to make a difference. You're going to get the same answer in the end. Now you have an exponent after logarithm, but you can put your exponent in front. Now you'd have your exponent in front, which is t, multiplied by something. So to undo multiplication, you have to divide both sides by the log of 0.89. If you had chose to use natural logarithms, you'd have the natural log of 0.01 over the natural log of 0.89. Be the same either way. That would be your calculator ready form. Then you type it into your calculator. Whether you use natural logs or common logs, you get the same answer of about 20 hours for the caffeine to be 90% out of your body. This one here, we're dealing with half-life. To help you understand half-life, half-life is how much time has to pass before half of the material is gone, or for half the material to still be left. Either way. Now, since we're dealing with sodium-22, in my mind, I'm thinking that is something scientific. So I'm going to use the scientific one. And we had said half-life was for how much, how long it takes for half of it to be left. So it's decreasing in value. So it's the exponential decay. Also, another thing that would cue you into using this exponential decay is that you're asked to find the value of k. So you got to look at the formula that has k in it. So now we can start plugging stuff in here. Remember e is your natural number e. It says, what is the value of k? Well, that means we're looking for what k is. So we need to plug in something for t for our time. Well, our time up here is 2.6. So I'm going to plug in 2.6. Now we got to figure out what it is we're starting out with and what it is we're ending up with. They're not necessarily telling you exactly how much you're starting out with. But you could say, well, I'm going to start out with 100%. Well, 100% as a decimal is 1. So if you started out with 1, you'd put that there. Now, we're looking at how long it takes for half of it to be left. Well, half of 1 is a half. So over here, I'm going to put a half. Now I need to finish solving this. Now, normally, if this was something other than 1, I'd have to divide that by both sides. But 1 times that doesn't change it. So now I just have this. Now I have the part with the exponent by itself. All I have to do is solve it. I could use a common log to both sides. However, I'm dealing with the natural number e, so I'm going to use a natural log. Take the natural log of the left side and the natural log of the right side. Remember, natural log is going to undo e. So natural log undoes the e, leaving you only with that negative exponent of negative 2.6k. Then to get k totally by itself, we just have to divide or multiply by the reciprocal. So that's what I did here, was multiplied by the reciprocal. So negative 1 over 2.6, still multiplied by the natural log of half. That's your calculator-ready form. Then go ahead and type it into your calculator. And this is the value of K for sodium-22.